Hello, welcome to another synesthesia tutorial. Uh, in this one, I'm just going to real quick show you guys how to port a shader from Shader Toy. Uh, if you want to just manually uh, port the shader instead of using the automatic importer, because sometimes this won't work. Um, and other times, maybe the shader won't be listed. Uh, so, also just first off, I want to say that you should um, should always look at the specific shader uh, in question and think about what the artist's intent is. So if they just list a shader on Shader Toy, um, if you look up the actual license that Shader Toy has, uh, all of these are technically automatically listed as non-commercial use. So what you shouldn't do is use this tutorial to just copy a bunch of shaders off Shader Toy and use them in commercial works, uh, unless you have the permission of the artist or unless you see on the particular shader if maybe at the top uh, they'll have their own uh, license specified, which would override the Shader Toy one. Okay, so the basic fundamental thing you're doing when you're porting a shader from Shader Toy to Synesthesia, the main thing you have to do is just replace these shader inputs. So Shader Toy has certain uniforms that are uh, specific to Shader Toy, things like eye time, eye resolution, and you can actually see all of those up here uh, in this shader inputs drop down. So none of these variables will be recognized in synesthesia. So you just need to go through and replace these with the synesthesia equivalents. So if you're wondering what those synesthesia equivalents are, if you just come to the main site and go to this documentation link, that opens up the uh, synesthesia shader format docs. And if you look under creating scenes, there's GLSL uniforms, where you'll find things like render size, time, frame count, which all map pretty much one-to-one -one with the shader toy variables. So you'll just need to be replacing eye resolution with render size and eye time with R, uh, all caps time. So uh, with that out of the way, let's look at how to port uh, this shader. I just picked a random one uh, from shader toy. And we're going to try to get it running in Synesthesia. So I assume you'll already have a custom scene folder set. And then you can come up here and click Create New Scene. And that creates this new scene. And then you can click Edit. And that opens up. Actually, I have this over here and this over here. So I can see the scene and just click back and forth. So um, I'll assume that you also already have some sort of code editor like Sublime or VS Code. Um, if not, you should just download one of those, although you could just use a normal text editor. So now we're just going to copy all of this and leave the render main function there and paste it. So uh, the first step, I suppose, you could start anywhere, but um, in Shader Toy, the main function is called main image, and for us, it's render main. So you need to swap out render main for main image. Render main takes void. So we'll have to make it uh, have the same look as our render main down here. So it returns a vec4. So the next step is because their main image just sets frag color. Now we actually need to return frag color because uh, that's how synesthesia does it. And then. Um, we could just try to compile this and see what happens. It'll have a ton of complaints, but that's expected. So over here is the line number. Um, and you can see, I mean, I guess just working backwards to front, uh, once we fix all these things, the scene should run. So it's complaining that frag color is undefined. And what I usually do is just define it up here uh, and set it to black. Uh, and that replaces the their main image, which had frag color already defined. Uh, 
So we can save the file and come back here and hit Control R. And now you see that error is gone. There's a new one, 523, undefined variable I time. And that appears a bunch. So all you have to do is find and replace. So I time. And the synesthesia variable is just time. So we'll just go through and replace. Um, let's go ahead and save this and go back here. OK, now it's complaining about frag chord, which was the other thing we removed from this function. So uh, what we can do, here's where frag chord is used. And this is actually super common in all shaders. So you have a couple options here. If you really wanted to, you could replace this with xy, because that's the synesthesia variable, and then replace all of these eye resolution with render size. Um, but all this is doing is creating the UV variable. So you could also just replace this with UV. And then it's going to complain about some other eye resolution. So let's just go ahead and replace that with render size. Replace all. Save. All right. It's working. Sweet. So what you could do from here is go through and find some cool things to uh, put on controls and also use the uh, audio reactive uniforms down here. So drop something like SynTime. Just drop like SynTime in somewhere. And now you have audio reactive time for your scene instead of just the uh, default constant spinning. So there's a lot more nuance to it. There's a lot of little bits that uh, you'll learn. But if you just pay attention to the uh, compilation errors down here and spend some time, you can get, uh, you should be able to get any scene running in. Everything in Synesthesia is either a float or a vec2 or a vec3 or a vec4. We don't use any int types. Um, or uh, IVEX. So Shader Toy actually has iframe as an int. So if you just did a one-to-one -one replace with iframe for uh, frame count, sometimes it'll complain at you, Synesthesia will complain at you about the type because the shader is doing some operation that expects an int, and you just gave it a float. So sometimes you just have to wrap uh, frame count in int if you want to get it to work. You'll sometimes run into issues where pi is defined in the shader. Uh, I think this one actually has it defined as well. So we already have that defined. So um, sometimes that'll lead to an issue. It didn't in our case, but something to look at. So one more gotcha I'll mention is these eye channels down here. Um, a lot of scenes end up using these eye channels. These are usually for textures that uh, Shader Toy provides built in to make it really easy for uh, shader creators to add textures to their scene. In Synesthesia, you can import images. Uh, and that's all explained here in the docs. So you could actually try to find this exact same image and add it to the scene. Um, I will say that that's one of the good things about our importer is that it actually has all of these built-in images um, that Shader Toy uses. So if you try to automatically convert the scene first, that in some cases will actually download the image for you and add it to the uh, imports in SSF. So that's a good thing to know. Um, what won't ever work in Synesthesia are these cube maps, uh, and that's just because we don't support them. So a lot of scenes like this one that has these uh, reflections in this 3D environment, uh, you will not be able to simulate that very well. Uh, there's no easy way to work with cube maps in Synesthesia. So you have to just replace it with a 2D texture lookup instead of a 3D texture lookup and just do some math to simulate that third dimension.
So one final thing is the uh, mouse controls that a lot of shaders have. Uh, sometimes they have keyboard controls too. Uh, obviously, Synesthesia does not support keyboard controls in the same way, uh, or mouse controls like this, but we have XYs and toggles and bangs. So you can just replace, if you just search through here for the iMouse variable, uh, which it says right here, you can just replace that with your own XY pad and add a toggle for the click action. And you should be good to go there. Music, so if they're doing a SoundCloud link or whatever, um, it, it's kind of counterintuitive here because you'd think, oh, well, the audio reactive shaders on Shader Toy should port easiest to Synesthesia. But um, the way that Shader Toy does audio reactivity is just totally different. So their audio reactivity will look like this, like texture uh, I channel zero with some uh, VEC2 to look up the sound data. So usually I would just replace, and then maybe they'll do dot .r at the end to, to turn it into a float. I would just replace that whole thing with something like sin high hits. And that's a good place to start. Uh, if you run into that, if you're trying to port an actually audio reactive shader out of Shader Toy. Okay, so that should cover it. Um, please do remember to check the license of whatever shader you're using. Sometimes and certain artists will, will post their stuff with an MIT license or you know, a completely open license that basically says, hey, do whatever you want with this. Uh, in which case that's awesome and you can mod the hell out of it and use it in whatever work you want. Um, but a lot of them are specifically listed as non-commercial, so just be sure to not you know, use this to just rip a bunch of shaders off Shader Toy and just use in commercial work uh, because that is, you know, shaders take a lot of time and expertise to make. So uh, just remember to respect the original artists who are nice enough to share their work with you on Shader Toy. All right, hope that helps some people out. Um, I will just say there's uh, something very similar you can do with interactive shader format. If you just look up their interactive shader format spec, you'll see all of their uniforms, and it's another simple uh, find and replace swap with the synesthesia ones. All right, have fun.